Okay, so this is my last video of the year, um, and it's just kind of going to be me talking about Rudolph's shiny new year, which is just one of my, you know, I love the Rankin and Bass, you know, stop motion animation type stuff. I just, I've always loved it ever since I was a little kid, and I just figured that, you know, I'd talk about my, you know, not my favorite one, because of course I love the, the original Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, um, and I do love Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July, and I love, you know, so many other various ones that Rankin and Bass have done, not just Rudolph ones, but also, you know, Santa Claus ones and other, you know, just other miscellaneous ones that they've done. Um, but this video is going to be specifically about, uh, Rudolph's shiny new year, since it's, you know, I'm, you know, putting this up on, you know, Jane, uh, you know, you know, December 31st, and, you know, the next day will be, you know, you know, t tomorrow will be, you know, you know, 2022, hopefully it'll be a better year than this last year has been, um, than the last two years have been, um, I mean, for me personally, the last two years weren't really, like, super horrible type years, I mean, like, th th thankfully no one near me, extremely close to me, you know, got COVID and, you know, died from it, thankfully, you know, knock on wood, um, <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, like, good things happened in my life this, you know, in the last year, you know, like, I had a cousin that got married last year, um, I had, I think there was actually a couple of weddings on, you know, uh, my, the other side of my family, actually, no, there were two, two weddings, um, on my dad's side of the family, one of my cousins got married, uh, last year, and then the other one got married this year, um, and, uh, I have met both of my, uh, new cousins via them, they're both very, very nice, and I do like both of them, uh, the one that married my, uh, cousin, uh, closest, uh, to me geographically, um, he, uh, uh, he's from Spain, and he plays Pokemon Go, so we play Pokemon Go together whenever we're at family events, so that's always nice, and he knows anime and stuff, so it's nice to have someone to talk to, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, just other things that happened, you know, one of my nieces, you know, my older niece graduated from high school this past year, and she has her, you know, has a job now, um, and, you know, just other things have happened, you know, I started my YouTube channel this past year, and to all of you that have, you know, so far become subscribers, or even those of you that have watched the videos, regardless of whether or not you become a subscriber, which I would like it if you did, but that's not something that I'm like, being, you know, everyone that watches a video must subscribe or anything like that, I don't, usually try to push that, um, but, you know, thank you to all of you that have been watching the videos, um, and, you know, have subscribed at this point. At the moment that I'm recording this, I'm only up to, like, 88 subscribers, so we'll see if that number goes up anytime soon. I hope it does, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but, uh, another small announcement in regard to the, uh, channel before I go into the actual Rudolph stuff. Um, the, I am going to lessen the number of videos that I do, which for those of you that have been watching, I've been doing about five a week or so. I'm going to put that down to like two or three a week, um, because, um, I have work and within the next year or within the next like month and a half, two months, I will be transitioning to where I will be working from home, um, for my job. And so that means I'll be spending a lot more time in this room in general, um, because this is the best room for me to be able to use for that job for, uh, you know, working from home. Um, but I also want to be getting more into my writing because I also like to write and I'm, I'm, I'm working on fan fictions that have different, you know, theories that I've heard from other people, theories that like I've just kind of thought up on my own. Um, some of them are one piece, some of them are other stuff, but I, I kind of want to work on those a little bit more. And I may end up doing videos occasionally that connect to them just to like, you know, explain a certain theory or something, but I'm still going to be doing videos. I'm still going to do, you know, One Piece and, you know, Disney videos and such. And as of the recording of this, I have seen Encanto, the newest Disney one. Um, my, on Christmas, um, my sister and her family and my dad were all here at my mom's house and, uh, we watched, uh, Encanto on Disney Plus. And that was very nice, and we all very much liked it and everything. Um, so I will be doing a review of Encanto soon. Um, I just haven't quite gotten there yet. And as of the recording of this video, I have not yet seen Spider-Man No Way Home. And I'm doing very good at trying to avoid spoilers for it. There's a few things that it's a little bit hard to miss, but for the most part, I'm trying to avoid spoilers for it as much as I can. And um, hopefully in the next couple of days, my dad and I might be able to go see it. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I'll get to see it 
fairly soon because I do want to talk about it with people and I do want to find out what happens. But between Christmas and New Year's and weather and, you know, other things that have been going on and work and everything, it was just really hard to try to figure out a time when we could go. And so um, that'll be that. But yeah, I'll still be doing videos, obviously, but I'll be doing just like maybe a little bit less. Um, I have a series recorded now about the uh, Metal Liberation Army, so those will be coming out with, you know, first couple of months of the new year, um, January into February, and then my first video of the year is going to be, um, my, uh, discussion on Ari from My Hero Academia, um, because I just kind of thought she, she just represents this, you know, very, very horrible things have happened to her, and she's trying to look forward to the future, so I'm gonna you know, I'm going to, you know, do a video about her is going to be the first one that comes up for this year, uh, for, uh, for 2022 is going to be an airy video. So time to talk about Rudolph. So to do that, I have a little Rudolph. It's going to go over here by Barry. I also have this, which is just like, you know, various random plastic toy of Rudolph that I've had for a very long time. Um, well, you know, very-ish long time. He's going to go over here, too. Not that you can really tell that it's Rudolph. He's going to go over there. Um, and then, because we're going to talk about Rudolph's shiny new year, I have a new year headband, which I'm not going to wear because, it, yeah, I know this is from 2019. It was the only one that I had. Um, so we're going to put that on Stitch. So we're going to have Stitch here with the new year. So we're going to put Stitch right here. Maybe. Stay. There we go. Okay. So let's talk about Rudolph. Slight history on Rudolph. So um, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the original book, um, was written by Robert Louis May, and it came out in 1939. Um, and it was just this, you know, cute story about like this reindeer that helps Santa. He's like the youngest one on the sleigh team and everything. And then in uh, 1948, there was an uh, act, a uh, color animation cartoon of it that they did. Uh, that I believe aired on television and probably in movie theaters and stuff like that, like before cartoons, uh, before movies around Christmas time, since they did that a lot in theaters. Um, so there is that. Um, I've, I've never seen it. I think I've seen like clips from it or snippets from it. I've seen stills from it. Um, and it looked, for, for the time frame, it looked pretty good. And then there's the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer song, which came out in 1949. Uh, sung by Gene Autry, you know, one of the singing cowboys and everything. Uh, that was pretty big at the time, and it, like, reached number one on the charts and everything, because, you know, why wouldn't it? Um, and, of course, to this day, we all sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and everything. And then, odd bit that I did not know, um, DC Comics, uh, from 1950 to 1962, ran a series of Rudolph comics, probably mostly around Christmas, um, but... It, you know, they have Rudolph comics, so Rudolph is technically also a DC character, so let's let's try to put him in the Justice League movies. <laughs> At the very least, he can brighten up the stage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Tell me that you would not love to watch as, like, you know, Batman rode in on a sleigh being pulled by Rudolph. I have no idea if that actually happened, because I have no idea if, like, Rudolph met the, uh, like, met the members of the Justice League, but, you know, there may have been some time frame for crossover since it, you know, ended in the 1960s. Um, and then there, are, there is, of course, the, the most famous version of Rudolph is, of course, the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Rankin and Bass, the TV special that came out in 1964, um, which, you know, both of my parents remember growing up watching that and everything like that, that, you know, they loved that and everything, and there's all the great songs that come from it. Actually, the night before I'm recording this, I watched Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the Rankin and Bass special, and then I watched Rudolph's Shiny New Year, so... I got Rudolph running through my head right now, uh, which I have no problem with. And then there's, of course, Rudolph's Shiny New Year itself, which came out in 1976, which will be the main focus of this video. And then, of course, the other Rankin and Bass one uh, for Rudolph is Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July, which came out in uh, 1979. Um, so that came out the year before my sister was born. Um, and, um, I've seen, of course, all of them. I've seen most of the Rankin and Bass things. There's a few that I just don't care that much for, but, like, I love the Rudolph ones. I love, like, you know, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. You know, I love, you know, Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey, which is just adorable. There's, like, a few little Drummer Boy ones that they have that I really like. Um, so, you know, there's those ones, and I really like them. 
Um, and then uh, in 1998, they had a another Rudolph Christmas movie. It was not connected to Rankin and Bass. It was just another animated one that they had that looked pretty good. Um, I've probably seen it, but it's been a very long time since I've seen it, since it's been over 20 years since it's been out. And I just don't know if I ever saw it. It was very, very a long time ago. And then the other one that is kind of connected to Rankin and Bass is the Rudolph's Red Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys, which is a, a CGI film that came out in 2001. Um, it's not extremely high quality, but it's still like this cute story about Rudolph and the, the reindeer and Santa and everything like the, you know, like Hermes and, you know, Yukon Cornelius and, you know, and Clarice, you know, his girlfriend and everything, you know you know having to save christmas again from this guy called the toy taker and it it's just adorable and it, i mean it's not bad i mean the animation isn't the best in the world but it's still cute and charming in its own way so uh on to the actual purpose for this video rudolph shiny new year sorry um and so as i said rudolph shiny new year came out in 1960 uh sorry 1976 um, and it is American Japanese Christmas and New Year stop motion animation television special. What it means by by American Japanese is that uh, Rankin and Bass were the creators of it, and they were the ones that designed it and everything. But most of the animation for it, all the stop motion animation, was done in Japan itself, and then it was brought back over here, and then like they dubbed it. <laughs> the actors went through and like dubbed it. Um, so kind of similar to like what happens with anime these days. Um, and of course, uh, the premise of it, uh, just going into the story itself, is uh, just after the events of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, Santa Claus receives a letter from his friend Father Time, and he uh, finds out that, um, you know, that the baby New Year, Happy, has gone missing, and that if they do not get baby Happy back to, you know, New Year's castle or whatever, and like crown him the New Year before by the 12th bong on midnight on New Year's Eve, then December 31st will go on and on and on forever, which, you know, give or take what year you're in, that's not a bad thing, but it's just like everything kind of just stops, so that's the point um, for why that's a bad thing, and Santa sends off Rudolph to go and find his way, because, you know, it's the same night that they just got back from, like, the big snowstorm delivery, and, like, the only one, of course, that can find his way in the fog is, of course, Rudolph, so he sends off Rudolph. Um... And Rudolph makes his way through, you know, the sands of time uh, to, you know, where he ends up meeting uh, a couple of other just random characters. One is um, General Ticker, who is just a little military clockwork guy. Then there's the Great Quarter Past Five, or Court for short. Um, <laughs> this camel that has like a clock on its back. It always says Quarter Past Five, um, which... You know, hey, you know, you know, day jobs, you know, try to get off at like five, quarter past five, you're gone, um, is where that comes from. And of course, they're making their way through the desert. And uh, one of the things that they encounter is this giant um, evil, evil bird called Eon. And it's explained that Eon can only live to be an Eon old. I've looked... I don't know if there's an exact definition for how long an eon is. It's just, it, it's, oh, it's a immeasurably long amount of time. Okay. And, um, you know, eons, you know, eon is up this December the 31st. So he wants to find the baby happy so that way he can prevent, you know, the new year from coming. So he doesn't turn into ice and snow and die. Um, so, uh, you know, we see Rudolph and General Ticker and Quarter Past Five, who really don't have a huge amount of bearing on the story themselves, make their way um, through the sands of time to, you know, ha the New Year's castle where Father Time lives. Uh, Father Time is the one narrating the story, and he is uh, voiced by uh, Red Skelton, who is a, a very famous comedian at that time frame. Um, and, you know, Rudolph and the others arrive, and, you know, uh, you know, you know, Father Time explains that, well, Baby Happy is... Now, apparently he wasn't all that happy here for various reasons. It's revealed that, like, Happy has really big ears whenever he takes off his hat. And everybody just laughs at him and everything. And he just, you know, he just feels so, you know, embarrassed and, and outcast and everything. And he ran away. And, you know, uh, Father Time explains that when it comes to um, the New Year, they need to have the baby New Year there. And this is where we get one of the songs, uh... The Moving Finger Rights, which is just this uh, song that kind of just illustrates the fact that, you know, 
oh, on New Year's Eve at, you know, the stroke of 12 when, you know, reference to, you know, the stroke of midnight and everything on New Year's Eve. And they have this, you know, this giant magical New Year's diamond. It's based on the ball in New York City. Ball drop in New York City and various places around the world. Um, that lands and, it, you know, crowns happy the new year and said new year will then, you know, grow and learn to, you know, you know, manage time and everything. And we just kind of watch as like the baby grows and everything, you know, gets older as the months go by. And then, you know, by the end of the year on the next December, December the 31st, he will then, you know, crown the next new year. Okay. Fair enough. And, um, he's explaining that to Rudolph and he's just like, well, I kind of think I know where Happy might have gone. I think that he went to the archipelago of last year's, which just brief explanation, archipelago is just giant area of islands all together, kind of like, um, oh, um, parts of the, um, I think parts of uh, the Pacific, like the, you know, Pacific Ocean where there's like lots of the little islands, like certain areas of that I think are considered archipelagos. And then there's other areas that are considered archipelagos. There's large amounts of islands in a small area. Um, and you know, old, you know, the old year sends Rudolph off to go and head toward, you know, the archipelago of last years. And he flies off and we get the song turn back the years, which is, you know, just, you know, showing the passage of time and Rudolph traveling and everything like that. It's not a bad song. Um, most of the songs in this are okay. I don't particularly care for the, the, you know, hand that writes or whatever, finger that writes time or whatever. I don't care that much for that one. Um, but I like Turn Back the Years. And on his way, Rudolph ends up getting attacked by Eon. And he is then saved by this giant sperm whale with a clock in his tail that is called um, Big Ben. As in a reference to, of course, the giant clock tower in London, which I want to see someday, but I have not yet because I've never left the United States. Um, I want to, though. Um, and, you know, it's this big whale and he, you know, scares off Eon. And then, uh, you know, Rudolph, you know, rides on his back and they sail their way to the next island, to the first island in the archipelago. And they land on this island that is uh, kind of represents 1 million BC, or sorry, 1 million uh, BC, which you know, via logic of stuff, there would not be dinosaurs, but there are dinosaurs, and the the father time that's from that island is a caveman. Uh, the concept for each of the islands for the archipelago of last years is that um, when the new year retires, he goes to the archipelago of last years, and he chooses an island, and that becomes his new home, and for, you know, that island itself, they're kind of just, like, stuck within the time frame of that year. So 1 million BC, or OM for short, is kind of this caveman, and he has this island full of dinosaurs, which, okay, admittedly, yeah, okay, yeah, no, that, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> that, would, that would be pretty cool, I would admit that. Um, of course, obviously, a million years ago, there were no dinosaurs on Earth. It would have been like, you know, so many more millions of years ago, but they put that there. Um, you know, joke about, you know, cavemen and dinosaurs existing at the same time. Although, by a technicality, they never explained in the movie if, like, before humans, quote-unquote, came along, evolved, or whatever, were there, like, dinosaur father times? Or was it, like, whatever the dominant species is of that year, of, like, that time frame, is, like, what the father time is? And then, like, oh, well, the dinosaurs are dead. Uh, moving on to mammals. <laughs> And then just like go that way. I don't know. I have no idea. That might have been it. That might have not been it. I don't know. But uh, Rudolph talks to OM and he explains it, you know. Um, well, you know, because it's like Rudolph is very sad. You know, why for the ends of your mouth go down, not up? And, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that again. Um, and he sings a song, uh, It's Raining Sunshine, which is just, you know, make sure that you keep a positive attitude and everything like that. And what ends up happening is, you know, Rudolph feels a little bit better, and then he finds out from OM that, yeah, Happy was here on the island, and, you know, he made a lot of friends and everything, and he saved a baby Pteranodon. <laughs> um, okay, so does that mean that Happy is Kaido and that King was the Pteranodon that he saved? <laughs> does, is Happy the one that wants to be Joy Boy? I had to throw one of these references here. I'm sorry. Um, because it's like, you know, 
King's a Pteranodon, he saves a Pteranodon, Kaido saved a king. It's just like, oh my god, I just, I had to throw that in there, I'm sorry. Um, but he saved the baby Pteranodon, and then, um, you know, the hat fell off and everybody laughs and then he leaves. <laughs> so, um, O.M. and Rudolph head off to, you know, keep riding, you know, Big Ben around to the other arch archipelagos. Um, we kind of get, like, a passage of two days, and, like, Rudolph and the others are, like, Vid you know, Rudolph and Big Ben and O.M. are visiting all these other islands, and the other islands that they mention are uh, 4000 B.C., uh, which Rudolph mentions that they were just interested in build building pyramids, so that's a reference to ancient Egypt. Uh, 1492 was too busy discovering things to even talk to us, so probably their, um, their father time is probably a representation of Columbus. Um, not going to touch that concept right now. Uh, then there is, uh, 1893, uh, which they were, I don't remember exactly what they, what the joke was that they said about it, but it was not good. And like, that's a reference to like the panic of 1893, um, which I, I, I unfortunately don't know a huge amount about that one. I'm a, I apologize for that one, but that was not a good thing. And then there's, uh, 1965 island which Rudolph said was just far too noisy which is a reference to Beatlemania the British invasion um and then opposition to the United States being involved in a, the Vietnam War so there's a bunch of references in that one um for that um and you know Rudolph and O and OM and Big Ben you know go to this the, the sex island and it's called uh the island of 10 to 3 so 1023, pronounced 1023. And this is where they run into this like Scottish knight type character. Good old Sir 10 to 3 himself. And the island is all based around uh, mythology, uh, like a different like Grimm's fairy tale type things. And let's, you know, stated that this is the island, this is the year when like all of these different things happened. And this is where we get the song, you know, what a wonderful world we live in. And, you know, it references Cinderella. And then, like, as they're going around, we see all these different, you know, fairy tale characters. We see, like, Miss Muffet and her tuppet. And there's, like, the spider and, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf. And we see the, the three little pigs and, like, Cinderella and her prince and everything. And, like, her getting the shoe on her foot and everything. And, like, currently Mom and I are, like, just starting, like, season six of Once Upon a Time. So I'm just, like... So, were the guy did like the guys that write Once Upon a Time just like see this and just like let's do that? <laughs> this entire place where all these fairy tales are happening at the same time, and the beat on it, they even talk to Rumpelstiltskin, and he's sitting in his like tree, like you know, spinning gold, you know, straw into gold, and he's just like, you know, no baby ever wants to stay with me. It's like okay, um, but you know, so we get that, and uh, during the time frame you know, uh, Happy is on the island, and he end up finding, ends up finding his way into the home of the three bears, so, you know, he's like the Goldilocks of that situation, you know. Forage, too hot, too cold, just right. Chair, too hard, too soft, just right. Breaks the chair, goes upstairs after he drank, you know, after he eats the porridge, and then he falls asleep in the bed. It's too hard, too soft, just right. Blah, 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 blah. Three bears come in, and then him and the baby bear end up becoming friends. Um, and then, unfortunately, via things, you know, hat comes off, and Happy gets very sad because everybody's laughing at him, and then he runs away again. Um, and, uh, Happy and, um, you know, Rudolph and the others see Happy as he's, like, leaving, and, like, they're trying to escape, you know, they're trying to follow him to catch him, and, you know, there's this giant wind that comes up, and he gets, like, swept away in the wind, and then he ends up landing on the island, um, of 1776, um, which is, uh, you know, reflects colonial America and, uh, Sev, 1776, you know, Father Time, uh, is, res uh, resembled, is based off of, uh, Benjamin Franklin, um, which I'm okay with, um, and, you know, Happy Lands there, and, like, we see him, like, trying to, we see the Ben Franklin Sev trying to, you know, fly the kite with a key on it, and he catches Happy and everything, and, you know, and then they're heading down to the 4th of July parade, because, of course, in 1776, what better day is there to always celebrate than the 4th of July? Um, so, you know, they're there at the 4th of July parade. So, you know, there's the song, the 4th of July parade. And, like, half, you know, uh, Rudolph and uh, O1, or sorry, OM and uh, 10 to 3 are, like, running through the streets trying to find Happy. And they're running to the par parade. And then, you know, um, you know, Happy has to take his hat off because the flag's coming by because, you know, 
yeah, yeah, takes his hat off and like everybody starts laughing at him and then he, you know, runs off again. And Sev apologizes to Rudolph and the others after he understands what happens. And then they see that Eon has finally gotten his, you know, feathers, I guess, on Happy and he's flying him toward his island of no name, which is due north of the North Pole. So it's really far north and it's really cold. And Rudolph and Sev and OM and 10 to 3 and Big Ben are all heading up toward uh the island of no name and you know, all of them are getting kind of sad about the fact of like well, how are we supposed to try to get him and this is where we get the song from rudolph called have a little faith in me where he's you know talking you know trying to you know cheer them up and saying you know just you know put your faith in me that i'll make sure that everything goes fine <laughs> and um you know he ends up lighting his nose and like it's kind of like uh snowing outside so it's like kind of like all the snow or the hail ish type stuff kind of like lights up you know starts glittering so you know it's like raining sunshine reference and you know he cheers them up and then they get to the island and rudolph and the others you know try climbing up the mountain to try to get to where happy is and at this point they have about a half an hour until it's midnight on new year's eve so they better hurry um and they get up to the you know they you know kind of escape or they, they kind of try to get up there and then like they wake up Eon and Eon like knocks them down with like a bunch of snow and like they all get turned into snowballs. And then uh, Rudolph uses his nose to like melt the snow when he escapes. And then he, you know, climbs up, flies up to where Happy is because like Eon's asleep because he thinks that, oh, I'm just, you know, fine and I'm just going to keep Happy here as my slave for the rest of eternity. And uh, Rudolph is like talking to Happy and like tries to explain to him that, you know, you, you can't be... Well, Rudolph shows him his nose and then he tells him the story about, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and, you know, that it's him. Like, we get, like, this little tiny little animated thing where they didn't just do stuff from the original animated Rankin and Bass one. I don't know. Um, but we get that and then um, Rudolph um, tries to make Happy understand that, you know, yeah, people are laughing at his ears, but they're laughing because they're so filled with joy by looking at him. And that having happy as the new baby new year will make this next year like this, this, you know, a much better, you know, better year than it has been in the past. You know, it'd be the happiest year yet. And, uh, you know, so Rudolph convinces happy of that. And then uh, Eon wakes up at this point because he hears happy, you know, happy and Rudolph talking and he wakes up and he like looks over and he's about to attack them. So then happy takes his hat off for good and, you know. Eon laughs and he falls down the side of the mountain laughing so happily and he like lands on the three snowballs and knock, you know, frees the others and he's just like laughing so happy and everything and he's like, well, you can't turn to ice and snow now and, you know, Eller's just like, well, you know, the bonging is start, starting to, you know, the, the, the clock on Big Ben is starting to bong because it's like in time with all the rest of the clock so it's just like, we gotta get him back to the, you know, New Year's Castle by the end of the, before the 12th bong and this is when Santa shows up. <laughs> And, you know, he's like, if I can make it around the world in one night, I can make it to Father Time's castle with a couple of bongs, you know, within a couple of bongs. And, like, they all get on the sleigh and they all, you know, fly off, except for Big Ben, who has to, you know, swim back, I guess. Um, it's like, oh, sure. Fly everybody else. Leave the whale. <sighs> Eon, you want to come with me? Sure. Why are you over there? I don't know. Ugh. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> um, this is what happens when I get bored and left on my own devices. Um, and what ends up happening is, you know, they, they get back to the castle just in time. And, you know, they crown Happy the New Baby New Year. And, you know, just before the 12th bong. So it's, it is the new year. And, you know, in, you know, it's, you know, designated 19 wonderful, but, you know, considering that, like, 1965 has already passed, and this came out in, like, 1976, or 1979, I think, excuse me, um, you know, it's probably a little bit more of a, um, you know, uh, a little bit more of a leeway in regards to, like, what year it specifically is, um, but, you know, it's still fun and everything, and, you know, we get the song Happy New Year, and then, you know, it kind of, you know, we see all these people singing and laughing and everything, like, and celebrating the new year and everything. And, you know, it goes into old Lang Syne and everything, you know, that everybody sings on New Year's Eve. So we get that and everything. And I do like the ending of it. It's just a cute story and everything. And, you know, all the other, you know, references to things are just fun. And 
I'm just also like, I really felt sorry for the, like the, the, the father time of last year of, you know, 2020. I just like, I am sorry, whatever father time had to deal with that. I am so sorry for everything that you had to put up through last year and this year. Hopefully next year is better. Hopefully next year is a lot better. Um, both for the world and for just people in general, I hope. Um, so, uh, I just like how they pull that off. I just, I just love, I, I love most of the Rudolph things. There's a fair amount of the Rankin and Bass things that I just adore. Um, next year I might do some other Christmas movies that I really like that are other, you know, I, you know, for all I know, maybe like on, you know, 4th of July this year, maybe I'll do a review of Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July because Christmas in July. Why not? Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. But, you know, I, I really like those. I really have love, you know, I love the Ray Kennedy Bass stuff and everything. And I love Rudolph. And I need to get a shirt that has Rudolph on it. I need to do that. So I thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope that you have a nice rest of your day. And I hope that you have a very happy new year. And I hope that for all of you that it's better than, you know, the last year has been or the last couple of years have been. So. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye. You see, I stuck it out. And when I grew older, I found that this nose was the most wonderful thing in the whole world because it was a different nose from everybody else's. And it was all mine. It was really me. And heck, you know with those ears, why, you're going to be the happiest new year ever.